making some travel plans. That's what we're talking about today on the Daily Race as the Apostle Paul continues to open up his letter to the Romans. So glad to have you here today. Uh, we are once a day, once again, kicking off our day together, kicking off our day, being intentional in our relationship with God. And we're not running a marathon today. We're not doing sprints. We are just taking one step forward in our relationship with God, intentionally pursuing Him each and every day. And uh, we are starting a study in the book of Romans, uh, Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Not a church that he planted, a church that already exists, um, but he wants to go visit it. And he's been wanting to do that. We uh, studied through the book of Acts uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and we saw that was that was the theme. Just as Luke, in his uh, gospel account, um, kind of the overarching story of that was Jesus getting to Jerusalem. Acts was about Paul getting to Rome. So this is a letter that, that Paul wrote during that time, during his third missionary journey, about that. Now we're going to pick up today in verse 8 uh, and and read along here. So let me, let me start off by doing that. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing I mention you always in my prayers, asking that somehow by God's will I may now at last succeed in coming to you. So he's been desiring to get to Rome. Why does Paul want to get to Rome so so much? Well, he's been given an, an apostolic charge uh, from, from Jesus himself to take the good news message to the Gentiles. Gentiles is everyone that's that's not Jewish. So Jerusalem is the capital of, of, of Judaism. Rome is the capital of, well, everywhere else. That's where the Caesar lives. That's where the seat of government is. That's where this vast empire that surrounds the whole Mediterranean, kind of the whole known world, that they, their reality. Now, it's, it's not the whole world, obviously. Uh, there's things going on in the Far East and in China and India. There's empires there throughout the world. But really, uh, this is the center of everything they know everything that they understand, a vast empire, Rome is at seat, Caesar is in charge, and Paul, as the apostle to the Gentiles, wants to get to the heart of the Roman Empire, the heart of the Gentile Empire. That's why he wants to get to Rome. Continuing in verse 11, it says, For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. We're going to come back to that statement. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, but but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. I am under obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish, so I am eager to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome. Now, let's, let's go back to that statement. He's making his travel plans. He's going to Rome. And he says, I want to come to Rome because I want to to encourage you. I want to spiritually strengthen you. I want to share this gospel message as the apostle, uh, the commission, the sent out one to Gentiles. I want to come and I want to share with you. But in this, he also says he fully expects that he is going to be encouraged by their faith. That we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. I think it's so important to remember that that anytime we go out, anytime we go out to share the good news message, anytime we go out to proclaim, anytime we go out to spread uh, the the message of of Jesus, that we are encouraged as well. It's not just about giving, it's about giving and receiving. If you've ever been on a mission trip, either a day trip, serving down at the local food bank, or going halfway around the world on one of our trips to Cote d'Ivoire, uh, maybe you've been part of another type of missions trip with uh, an organization uh, that you've been part of. You realize, you, you understand that you got so much out of that trip. That, that, yeah, you went and you prepared and maybe you, you did some work there. You brought some encouragement. You, you shared some things. But at the end of the day, you received so much more than, than what you gave. That's God's kingdom economics. When we serve the gospel message, when we serve Jesus, God uses that act of service, that stretching of ourselves to help us grow in exchange. I've even thought about changing the name of our mission trips recently, changing them to 
uh, to to spiritual journeys, uh, to to be more of a of a retreat, a spiritual retreat, because of what happens to us when we go. Y- yes, we serve. Yes, we help spread the good news message. But what happens and transforms inside us is so much greater. God works in us as we go out and share His message. Paul is is explaining that here. That he has, I mean, obviously he has so much to bring to this this church in Rome. But he fully expects that he is going to receive from them as well. That, that, that's humility. That's understanding how God's kingdom works. So when we go out, we not only give, but we receive. And in this last part here, he also uses another word here that, that's, that's interesting. He says, I am under obligation both to the Greeks and to the barbarians. So barbarians there just means anyone that wasn't Greek. That every, they just kind of, it was a pretty black and white culture back then. If you were Greek, meaning Roman, that kind of background, you were civilized, everyone else was uncivilized. Uh, so I'm under obligation both to the Greek and the barbarians, both the wise and the foolish. So I'm eager to preach the gospel to you who are also in, in Rome. He's, he's under obligation. Under obligation to what? To spread the gospel message. Why? Because he received it. I received this gift of salvation. I received this, uh, this grace from God. I received from Jesus. So I am obliged. I am committed that I have to in turn share this with other people. He doesn't say that, that he wants to or that he, he feels that it's a good idea. That because of the transformation of the gospel in his life, he is compelled. He has to share that with other people as well. And, and that's where we're going to kind of wrap up our time today. But do we feel obliged? Do we feel compelled to share the gospel with others? When we sit and think about what God has done for us, the impact that he's had on our life, the forgiveness of our sins, the the restoration of our lives, the redemption of us. When we really think about how much God has done for us, we, we should feel obliged. We should feel compelled to go and share that with other people. That this amazing gift that we've gotten, we should share that with others. It's like someone who was sick and found the cure. They want to share that cure with other people who are sick. And that's the, the tension, that's the, the feeling that, that Paul is sharing here. This is what drives him, this is what compels him to go on despite being put in prison, despite being beaten, despite being shipwrecked, all of these things, some of them that have happened in his life, some are still to come, but he keeps moving forward because of this obligation to the gospel. So in this, we have this two insights into to what Paul's kind of thinking here or what's motivating him. First is he wants to share the good news because when he gives, he receives. He knows that he's going to grow through the act of giving. And the second one is he is compelled to do it because of what Jesus has done for him. All right, let's put a pause in it right there. We're going to stop there in in verse 15 today. We're going to pick it up tomorrow again. Um, But let's let's, uh, get ready to to pray. Let's get ready for the day. And our uh, Always Be Praying campaign, it's Wednesday, which means we're, we're praying for people to come to Jesus. And our, our mission at Palm Valley Church is invite people to meet Jesus, follow him with our lives. So who are we inviting? Who are we specifically thinking about inviting into this, this amazing adventure of, of following Jesus? And if we don't have someone uh, on the forefront of our mind, someone that we're not thinking about, hey, let's pray that, that God would reveal someone to us, that we're compelled, as the Apostle Paul is here, to share that good news with, with others. Let's pray. God, we come to you this morning and uh, we just thank you so much for just the way that, that your economy works, God, that we can't outgive you. And God, so often we, we think of that in the area of finances, God, but we think about that today in this context and in the area of service, in the area of helping others, in the area of encouragement, that when we step into the lives of other people to, to help them out, God, that you bless us so much in return, that, that they have gifts of encouragement and, and blessing for us as well. God, we, we thank you for, for the way that you operate in that way. Help us to continue to grow through the acts of giving. And God, today as we, uh, just as a church, focus on the area of invitation, God, I, I pray for those that, that are in our lives, that are in our close circle of relationships, maybe people on our periphery uh, that need to, to be invited into a relationship with you. They need to be invited to take one step closer. Uh, maybe they're curious. Uh, maybe they've been asking questions. God, help us to, to lean into that. Not be afraid. Help us to be bold. Help us to be confident, but not in our own abilities, but confident in the fact that you are present with us, that your Holy Spirit guides and directs, and that you are working in their lives 
and you are drawing them towards you just as much as you are are compelling and moving us towards them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I'm ready for the day. I hope you are as well. And I will see you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.